As we saw in the last movie, with the enumeration column type, we're able to select one value from a very specific list and insert that data into the column. With a set column, we are able to, in a very similar way, define the kind of list of values that will be acceptable for the column. But instead of simply choosing one from the list, we are able to choose as many as we want. In effect, we can store multiple values from a list that we specify within a set column. Let's take a look. If we use our sample database, and then let's take a look at the products table. At the moment, there's three fields, three columns, product ID, price, and name. Now, if we added a description column to that product table, then we could add a set of words that we could build some kind of a description out of that we could add to each of the products. So let's run an alter table query on the products table. And we're going to add the description column. And we're going to make it of type set. Now the set type, as we just found out, allows us to specify a set of values or any or none of which can be entered into a single row. So let's say we allow our administrator of our database to add the data from this admittedly very limited set of adjectives by which we can build a picture of what kind of a product each of our products is. Now I should point out here that this is a very bad way to add a description. To try and put the fact that one kind of product comes from a fairy tale, another comes from Star Wars, and the fact that it's a hat, these are all unrelated kinds of data. Really we should have some column that specifies whether it's headgear or whether it's any other kind of costume item. We should have a column that specifies the genre of costume it is. And I don't know where the adjective scary would go, but they certainly shouldn't all go together. The only reason we're doing this is to exemplify the use of the set column type. So let's go ahead anyway and alter our table and take a look at the data that's already contained within our products table. As we can see, we've added a new column there, the description column, which is at the moment completely empty. Let's change some of the values here. We're going to update the products table and we're going to say set description equals, and I should point out again that the keyword set in this particular piece of SQL has nothing to do with the set column type. All it's saying is that we're setting the value of the description column. We're not referring to the fact that the description column is of the set column type. The set column type refers to a set of things, like I could have a set of objects, whereas the set, as it's being used in this particular piece of SQL, is unrela utterly unrelated and refers to setting of a value. So let's change the value of our description, the, d the row in our description column, to hat, which is one of the values that we specified, one of the hat, fairy tale, Star Wars, or scary values. Now we better specify a WHERE clause for this particular update query. 
otherwise it's going to change every row in the whole table. So let's specify that we're only talking about product ID number one, which is the Pelican mask. So very loosely, that's a hat. Let's take a look at what that's done. As we would expect, the value hat has been added to the description column. The only difference between this and the normal syntax for an, an everyday update query where we'd be updating, say, a character field is the fact that we put brackets around the value that we added. Let's take a look at something that shows off the way that the set column type works. We're going to set our description column to both hat and fairy tale. So hat, comma, fairy tale. Notice that we don't need to break out of the quote marks. We just need to put a column between those two values. Where product ID equals three. So that's the princess's tiara. That is a a hat like or headgear of some kind and it's kind of a fairy tale sort of store sort of toy. Now let's run another select query to take a look at the, the data that we've just changed. As we can see we can specify two values into the description column and they'll both be successfully added. Of course if we try to add anything to our description column that we haven't specified when we created the column. Let's just put in a, a nonsense word camel in this case. My product ID is 11. That's the lightsaber. As we can see, it says rows matched, but changed zero. So although we didn't get any error in our query, as we can see, nothing has actually changed within the database. If we take a look at the exact set of items that we're allowed to put into the description column, the single values we're allowed to put in are hat, fairy tales, Star Wars and scary. You'll notice that the table that's showing the columns from the products table is rather broken up but doesn't look very clear. That's because our set column, the number of values that we've added, has thrown out the formatting for the MySQL monitor. Nothing's actually gone wrong with our system. It's just that it's impossible for it to show all of those values horizontally in the format that it wants to. With the enumeration column type that we found out about in the last movie, we were able to specify a single integer or whole number to add a value from the list of values that we specified when we created the column. We can do something similar with the set column type, but it's a little more complicated. If we want to add more than one value, as we do with a set column type, then instead of adding more than one integer, we type in a single integer that represents the binary representation of a truth table for the particular list that we specified when we created the description or whatever the set column was called. So let me be more, more specific about the way this works. We have in our set the values, possible values, hat, fairy tale, Star Wars and scary. Now each of these is represented by a binary figure and confusingly this is the confusing bit. The first one, first value that we see in the list, 
represents the smallest binary place value. And we're used to seeing the smallest place value, like 1 to 9, or like the first 0 and 1 in a binary number, on the right. So it's a little confusing to see that on the left. If we reverse things in our head, though, then we can see how we can put together the right decimal number to represent the binary number that will tell MySQL which values to go for. If you're confused by this, don't worry. You can always put in the values manually. You can always specify hat, comma, Star Wars, or whatever it happens to be. However, it's a quick and efficient method to put the figures in by specifying the binary number, and we could find it useful in certain circumstances. Let's say we wanted to update the products table to specify a uh, description for the Darth Vader mask. Now, the Darth Vader mask is a hat. I wouldn't really say it comes from a fairy tale. It's a prop from the Star Wars themed paraphernalia, and it's very scary. Kids wear it to scare other kids. So basically, we want hat, Star Wars, and scary. We want those values. Now, we could type them in separated by commas, or we can do it this way and enter a decimal number that represents the binary number for each of those values being true. So if we read from left to right, hat represents 1. So we do want a hat. So let's make a note of that. We've got hat is 1. Fairy tale is not true. So 0 for fairy tale, which would otherwise represent 2. So far, we've just got a total of 1. Move on to Star Wars. Move up a binary place. We get 4. So add 1 to 4, we get 5. Move up another binary place, we get 8. Add 8 to 5, we get 13. So 13 is our representation of hat, Star Wars, and scary in this case. Let's take a look at that. Put it in brackets, just like we do the other values. And number 10 is a Darth Vader mask. So that's the value that we want to change. Now if we run our select query on the products table, as we can see, the three values that we wanted have been added by using the decimal representation of the binary figure to specify the values to put into the set column. Once again, if you're not comfortable using this kind of notation, don't worry about it. You can always simply use the words themselves or the figures themselves, whatever you're using. And in fact, you may not need to use set and enumeration columns at all. They're very specific uses, and you shouldn't really use them unless you have a very good reason for doing so.